Hey, hey, hey! Just kidding. What's up, you guys? Just kidding. What's up, you guys? Just kidding. I don't talk like that. But since I'm a YouTuber now, I feel like that's how I should talk. Hey, welcome back. This is Destination Unknown, a solo travel adventure. My name is Roland. I'm gonna tell you all about my travels in Croatia for this episode. It was one of my favorite countries. It's beautiful, the landscape is amazing, the people are nice, it's cheap, and the ocean water is nice and warm to swim in in the summer, which is of big importance to me. High up on the list for a country that I like, there has to be water I can swim in. Last episode I was in Hungary with my friend Toby. We said our goodbyes and I had one more night in Hungary. I happened to meet Sky and Hope, two amazing girls that I went and had dinner, went out and had drinks with. We saw a punk concert and we talked for hours. They were both very smart and perceptive to the world. My kind of people. Shout out to Sky and Hope. Keep killing it. It's now August 23rd, 2017. My mom's birthday, as well as one of my best friend's birthday, Tyler. I would be kind of just hanging around in Hungary waiting for my bus to go to Croatia today. So I did some research and some planning for the next cities I would go to. I drew my mom an angel for her birthday. And I gave my mom and Tyler both a call to tell them that I love them. Make sure to tell those people that you love that you love them. Seriously though. I would take my bus from Hungary into Zagreb, Croatia. The bus ride was easy, a lot shorter than most of the ones I had done in my travels. The only really messed up part was at the border crossing between Hungary and Croatia. The border patrol guards made everyone get out of the bus and hand over our passports so that they could check them out. That part was normal. But while we were standing outside of the bus, thousands of mosquitoes swarmed us. It looked like there was a swamp nearby. You might see a lot of mosquitoes flying around me. So everyone was waiting for our passports to get checked through. We were running around, dancing, trying not to get bit by mosquitoes, but just getting lit up. When all of the bus's passports were approved, we got back on the bus, along with a couple hundred mosquitoes, and we continued on our way to Zagreb. Once the mosquitoes had had their fill of everyone on the bus, they were just stuck in there, flying around. And I tried my hand at revenge swatting them, but when I squished one on the window and somebody else's blood spurted out of the mosquito, I gave up on the revenge swatting. I was too grossed out. The first hostel in Zagreb that I stayed at was owned and run by this guy Marco, a German guy. I liked him right away. He was very sarcastic and had a no mercy kind of humor. He poured me a free beer, which was Croatia's most popular beer, Hajusko. It tasted like water. So instantly I was not impressed with Croatian beer, but it was cheap as heck, so that counts for something. My hostel mates came in a little bit later. They invited me to go out the next night. I agreed and I went to sleep. I had a very dry cough going on when I went to sleep this night. I was trying to hold it in so I wouldn't be annoying people all night. <coughs> it's only now that I realize that on the last couple months of my travels, I was in and out of sickness. Obviously in Morocco, I got destroyed and then a cough would keep kind of popping up as I was traveling. I think the toll of not good sleep, not eating the best, smoking tobacco, drinking a lot, all of those things were adding up and my body wasn't happy. My body hurts. In Zagreb, I did some flip training in a beautiful park. A guy named Matt came up to me and he introduced himself. He wanted to know how to do some flips and I taught him a better front handspring. He called his cousin Anna and she came to join us. It was funny, I wrote in my journal, she was hot, but crazy. We have the danger zone. We all went out for a beer, had a fun time, and then we all went our separate ways. It was a nice little interaction to have during the day. Back at the hostel that night, I was gonna go out with my hostel mates. Marco, the owner, gave us all free beer, free shots. He was very generous. And then we went out to the bars. We played Never Have I Ever for a very long time until that bar closed. And then reluctantly, we went to a club. Turns out it was a great time. We all danced our asses off. Before all this traveling stuff, I had not been much of a dancer, but sometimes the vibe just hits, you know? That's not always how I dance, by the way, okay? I was trying to spend less and less money as my travels went on. And so in Croatia, I was trying just to do one touristy thing a day or every two days. In Zagreb, I went up to the famous tower where you can look over the city. That was beautiful. I actually spent a lot of time up there looking over everything and getting my money's worth. Later that day, I took a bus from Zagreb to Zadar. Once I checked into my hostel there, I started drinking some red wine and just walking around the city. At some point I realized I had to poo really badly and there were no bathrooms anywhere nearby. I knew I wouldn't be able to make it back to the hostel in time. So I got naked and I went into the ocean and I did my business. 
The next day I'd be walking by that same spot and realize that the place where I had gone in was a public beach. So hopefully my poop wasn't anywhere near anybody. I felt really bad about that. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, Wilson! Wilson, I'm sorry! The old town in Zadar was really cool. You walk through the city wall to get into this enclosed area, and there's very close buildings and people walking around partying. A lot of energy there. This night, again, I had a dry cough. Probably should have not been drinking alcohol to allow my body to heal itself, but I wasn't making that healthy choice. So again, I had a dry cough that night. The Croatian summer was hot, and this was near the end of August. Something that I liked about the cafes there was when you ordered espresso, they would bring you a glass of water as well. I was drinking espresso throughout my travels, but just a simple glass of water with the espresso makes everything so much better. Gotta stay hydrated. Like if there's one thing that made me feel good throughout my travels was staying hydrated. So drink some freaking water, man. So explain something to me here. Everywhere I go, an Americano, right, is more than a coffee with milk in it. Does it make any sense? You're adding hot water to coffee. Come on. I went swimming a lot. The water was very warm and very salty, so it was easy to float in and very refreshing. One night in Zadar, I met everybody in the hostel and we went out to party together. Some of these people were Isabel, Tara, Tom, Fletcher, and Nick. I don't think I have any of their contact information, but if you're watching this for whatever reason, what's up? We played drinking games at the hostel for a very long time until they kicked us out, probably around 11 p.m. or something, we were being too loud. And so we went on a long walk. As we started on our walk, we were walking by the ocean. We all realized we wanted to swim. And so we undressed and we jumped in. A Little bit of skinny dipping for you. It was dark, so it wasn't like it was super weird. There's not a lot of things I love as much as swimming naked. Feels great. After that, we walked into the old city. Fletcher and I were asking around for weed because everybody in our group wanted to smoke. One group told us that we could buy some weed from a midget in a red shirt. Those aren't my words, I would have said little person. But that was the instructions they gave us, a midget in a red shirt. So we kept looking around and then we saw a little person in a blue shirt. We figured, how many little people are walking around Zadar anyway? So we went over to ask him. Him and his whole group were actually already rolling up a blunt and he was the guy. So we smoked with them and we bought a little bit of weed. We thought that was pretty epic. Very nice group of people. There were a ton of people out this night and we found out that there was actually a craft beer fest happening nearby. We went over, got a beer or two. Tom had a Bluetooth speaker with him. So I put on some tunes and we all had a dance party. This is a great picture from that dance party. It was getting late, the beer fest was shutting down, but the music was still playing. The girls in the group all felt tired and wanted to go back to the hostel, so they did. And then all the rest of the boys, we just kept dancing and having a great time. We were walking around to the different beer vendors, and most of them wanted to get rid of all the rest of the beer that they had. So they just kept giving us free beers. I took a picture with this guy, and we just kept interacting and dancing around. I did a few flips. Nick tried to do some as well. He hurt his back. I did a sprint race with Tom, and he won. I'm a pretty fast runner, I would say. At least sprinter. But Tom beat me by a landslide. That guy is... You're fast, man. After this party night, we all woke up pretty late and we just went to the beach together to hang around, tan a little bit, and swim some more. I went out with some of the hostel people to the high dive nearby. There's a couple different platforms you can jump off of into the warm Croatian water. I conquered my fear of the 10 meter jump, which normally I don't think of myself as a person who's afraid of heights, but when you're way up high on the 10 meter jump, it seems insane. Everyone was having a fun time with each other, so they all decided to stay another night in Zadar. But for myself, I wanted to continue my momentum of seeing Croatia. And so I bought a bus ticket and went to Šibenik. I don't have a whole lot of pictures from this time in my travels. I put them on a hard drive when I got back from the travels and it crashed at some point and I lost a few photos, which really sucks. But I like Šibenik. It was a smaller town, ocean, beautiful sunsets. This is a picture of a sticker that I saw all around Europe. Somebody puts it everywhere, but this was the biggest one that I saw. It was wheat pasted onto a wall. I believe in French it just means I exist. Now starting in Shibanik, I was trying to spend $10 a day or less, not including accommodation. It was maybe $15 or so for a hostel and then $10 a day or less on food. For the $10 a day or less on food, I was basically making pasta with veggies, a can of beans, 
or I would make some rice and buy some cheap meats. At one point in Shibenik, I was drawing in a cafe and a police car pulled up in front of it and the two police officers in there walked over to me. In my head, I was like, what the hell is happening? Am I about to be arrested? What did I do wrong? It turns out they had my ID that I had left at a store earlier. They said, hey, is this you? And I was like, uh, yeah, that's me. And they gave it to me and they said, have a good day and left. Very friendly police officers. Somebody had seen me go somewhere and knew to tell the officers where I was but whatever, I got my ID back, which was very important. I moved on from Šibenik to Split, one of the main cities in Croatia. They have a really big park that I spent time walking around in, and I eventually found a beach too. In the main old city where my hostel was, I busked for like an hour, just playing on my little drum that I had, and I was excited to have made 43 kunas, which is Croatian money. That equals about eight US dollars, which almost covered my food for the day. After that, I told myself I should be busking everywhere I go, just to make at least a little bit of extra spending money. It was hard to get over the fear of performing in front of random people and just hoping that they give you some money for it. But it actually gives people more joy than I would have thought. Some people would come up and dance with their wife or something. Younger people a lot of times would give me a few coins. You just gotta get out there, you know? Don't assume what people are thinking, just do what you wanna do, and you'll be rewarded for that. That's a life lesson. Psh, yeah. As I was journaling in a cafe one morning, I was eating some ice cream, a cute girl walked over and sat down at a table near me. She smiled as she sat down, and she started writing a postcard. I struck up conversation eventually, we started talking a lot and she was very sweet. So I offered to cook us dinner later that night. We agreed to meet up a little bit later. And so I hung around for the day and I also bought some ingredients to cook us food. It was gonna be a pasta dish as usual. When I arrived to her hostel, I was really nervous. I guess I was unsure if it was like a date or if we were hanging out as friends or what. I just wasn't being myself. But eventually as we started cooking, things got a little bit smoother and we started talking more. She also popped a bottle of wine which helped us chill out a little bit. Now I really did think she was cute, but she talked a little bit too much. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but she just kept talking about herself and not allowing any time for me to tell her who I was. And that's quite a turn off honestly. Like even for friendships, when you're trying to get to know somebody, you want to know something about them, they want to know some stuff about you. But if it's only one sided, it's like, eh. I don't know about this person. She may have just been nervous, but I wasn't so into it. I met some of her friends from the hostel. We all went out, drank, danced, the usual. But I was trying to save money, so I only bought one shot of tequila, and that was my night. I wrote that it was nice to go to sleep sober. You get way better sleep that way, who would have thought? The same people I had went out and danced with the night before invited me out again, but they were gonna go on a pub crawl for 20 euro and I didn't wanna get involved with that because I was trying to save money. So I spent the night alone, journaling, thinking about things and drawing. I was working on my drawing skills quite a bit while I was in Croatia. This funky character I made in Split and then I drew some of these other fun ones as I was traveling to other cities. Now in Split, I kept waking up and then extending my stay because I liked the city, but by September 3rd, I wanted to move on to the next city, Omish. And I wish I had done this earlier because Omish was one of the coolest places that I went in Croatia. The mountains and the water and the town, all amazing. Before I went to Omish, the receptionist in Split said, hey, you should stay another night. I'll discount your night, half price, which she was pulling at my heartstrings. I wanted to save that money. but I also wanted to move on and keep up my momentum of traveling. Omish is a little coastal town surrounded by giant mountains. I would sit at cafes and enjoy the aesthetic and the serenity of this city. My hostel was actually built against the mountain, meaning the back wall of the building was just the mountain, as you can see here. 
there are quite a few buildings built like this, and a very cool idea, but it seems a little sketchy for landslides and mountains moving and earthquakes. Pretty though. Pretty idea. Good, good idea, I guess. My first full day in Omish, I took a hiking trail up to a castle. What a view. What a place. I stayed up here a long time looking over the city. I did a little bit more hiking around the castle as well. You can see all of Omish from up there. I was swimming almost every day at this point, which made me very happy. I wrote in my journal that every time I swam, it felt like it pressed a reset button on my mind. I would just feel better after swimming in the ocean. And that's part of the reason I decided to move to Hawaii when I got back from my travels, because it's a place you can swim in the water all year round. And it really is important to me being able to swim in the ocean whenever I want. In Omish, I found a place to play pool, which I had been doing a lot with Toby earlier. I started playing by myself, but then an Italian man came up to me and challenged me to a game. He actually had four of his children with him. They were all running around, cheering him on, booing me as we played. And I lost the first game to him, but then I won the second one. Thanks to that guy for brightening my mood a bit. That was really fun. From Omish, I went to Makarska, another wonderful city with giant mountains that you can climb and hike. Okay, okay. My first full day in Makarska, I took this really big hike up the mountain. Unfortunately, I was really tired from past days of training parkour and taking hikes, so I didn't make it all the way up, but still, the view is incredible. lunch up there which I had brought with me to save money, a banana, an apple, salami, and a whole box of cookies. Health. I hiked for about two hours, I made it to about 2300 feet, and then I saw a sign that said the rest of the hike was about an hour and a half to get to the top of the mountain. I knew my legs couldn't handle that so I just hiked my way back down. It's September 6th by this point, I still have a little dry cough going. Every night when I'm trying to go to sleep, I'm trying to hold in my coughs. <coughs> so the sickness was pretty steady for a while, and then when I got into Serbia in the last episode, boom, I got very, very sick, and I decided to fly back home. I would spend one more day in Makarska, and then I would move on to Bosnia and Herzegovina. I looked at the hostel cost, it was only $9 per night to stay in a hostel there. That excited me a bit. That covers episode 9, Croatia, one of my favorite countries that I've ever been to. I'll see you next week, episode 10, the final chapter. That episode will cover Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, and then my travel home after five months of solo travel in Europe and Morocco. After that, I'm going to be hitting you with all those good parkour vlogs. I have a lot planned for 2021. Keep an eye out.